Joining us is CBS News legal analyst Jack Ford and early show contributor Jennifer Hartstein. She is a child and adolescent psychologist. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Maggie. This is about as bizarre as it gets, Jack. We've heard of the Twinkie defense, all kinds of unusual defenses. What about, is there anything to this hiccup case? Well, you know, I've heard people talking about, well, could she have an absolute defense to the charge here? We don't know if she did it or what she did exactly. or whether she's going to plead anything. But looking at how it might play out. But could the, the public attention she received because of the hiccup case and the notoriety have led her down this path that ultimately ultimately ended with a murder charge. You'd have to look at, at what sort of emotional damage she might have suffered. It was a bizarre episode. We all know that. But the question becomes, is it enough to give rise to some sort of legal defense? First thing you look at is an insanity defense, for instance. An insanity, basically, you have to prove that because of what your underlying mental condition is, you either didn't know what you were doing, you didn't know you had a gun in your hand, you thought it was a banana, or if you knew what you were doing, you didn't know it was wrong. We've seen situations where parents have killed their own children. They said, I knew I was doing that, but God was telling me it was the right thing to do. Chances are this would not raise to that, rise to that level okay. here. But the question then becomes, is there, was there enough damage done somehow that it, it had an impact on her ability to make rational decisions? You know, if you got some experts to say and they could point to real reasons for that to happen, you know, then you might be able to argue as her lawyer, well, she shouldn't be looked at in terms of a, the top count of a, a murder one, but maybe it had such an impact on her ability to make rational decisions that it, would, it could drop down to something such as a manslaughter. So that's something you might see being argued. I'm sure it won't help that she's been arrested several times over the yeah, years. Yeah, that never helps. I mean, if I'm her lawyer, I'm coming in saying she's, she has all these mental and emotional problems because of that, and the prosecutor's going to look at me and say, oh, yeah, well, what about other, the, her history of mm -hmm. problems here and some violence? You might be able to explain it away, but certainly a judge, if you ever got to a sentencing, a judge is going to look at that. It's not going to be something that's going to help her at all. Why might she also face? Uh, as Jeff mentioned, these severe penalties. If she says she, she didn't know, or if she argues that she didn't know that they were going to kill this man. Well, you know, it, even if she didn't know, if she thought she was only luring him in to be robbed, and said, I had no idea that there was a gun going to be involved here. There's still what you call a felony murder charge down in Florida and in most jurisdictions. And what that says is if you willingly participate in a felony, here a robbery, even if you had no idea that the other people involved were carrying guns or had plans to hurt somebody, you were still just as responsible as the person who pulled the trigger okay. in a legal sense. Sentencing obviously could be very different. A judge could look at you different in, in terms of sentencing, but legally you are just as responsible. All right, l let's talk about the emotional aspect of this case. Legally, the hiccup defense might not right. work in court, but is there something something to this, something tragic about this child having all this attention and then going uh, down this path later Ab in life? Absolutely, and the mom even says it wasn't, you know, it was the hiccup curse right. and not the hiccup case, and I think that's really important. Here was a young woman, four, you know, 15 or 16 years old, who ends up in the public eye, has all of this notoriety, and just as quickly it goes away. And what does that do for a young person's self-esteem? We see a lot of young adults who can't handle the spotlight and here's the one who's not trained to handle the spotlight, in it, gone, a lot of secondary gain from it. What does that do to her self-esteem later on? It's certainly going to be troublesome. What can be learned from this, us parents? What can we take away from this? Well, I think there is this issue where the mom says, this isn't my daughter, this isn't who I know. And I think we have to be really careful of what we put our kids out there for everyone to see because now she's open and exposed. And if she is this sweet, naive girl, like the mother is indicating, she's easily prey for other people. So we have to really be aware as parents to take a step back and protect our kids maybe a little more than we might be. All right, Jennifer Hartstein and Jack Ford, thank you both Very so nice. much. Thank you.